Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Destin Choice, and you're watching Choice TV. So in today's video, I decided to get on here and talk about what happened to Tiffany Richardson. Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this! I wanted to do one of these videos because you guys really loved my Superhead video when I talked about what happened to Corinne Stephens, her upbringing, and what she's up to now. And a lot of y'all really enjoyed my video where I talked about what happened to Orlando Brown, what he's up to, and much more. So I just like to bring this back and talk about what happened to Tiffany Richardson. Isn't it interesting how none of us really know what happened to Tiffany Richardson? Now, most of us know her from that infamous viral gif meme and that clip that we still to this day see for some odd reason. Now, it's no secret that Tyra basically embarrassed this girl on national TV, but did y'all know that at one point her and Tyra were actually cool years after the show and her and Tyra had a very bad falling out? Isn't it interesting how to this day people still don't talk about that and all the shady things Tyra did to her behind the scenes that we still don't know about? But Tiffany, oh my God, that girl is my heart. Oh. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. That that uh, that emotional thing that I had was like me being so invested in her. I actually thought she was going to win. She's a fake ass bitch. The hand ain't feeding me, so rough, rough, bitch. Today I decided to cover all that in today's video. It's no secret that Tyra is known for being a not so nice person. It's no secret that Tyra has shitted on the confidence of many people, embarrassed her contestants, and pretty much done a lot of cringeworthy things on her show. Hell, Tyra even knows she did some cringeworthy things on her show and she's able to own up to it to this day. She exploited so many of these girls because she wanted to make good television and she did all these things because she apparently wanted to prepare these girls for what the modeling industry really was. What you're seeing on America's Next Top Model is the fashion industry uncovered. I've had my agents and different photographers tell me all kind of stuff. I had seamstresses in Italy saying grosso, grosso, saying I was fat, fat. You know, I mean, this is how the industry works. And it's pretty evident that Tyra is now being exposed every single week for some shit that she did 15 to 20 years ago on her show. Because Tyra was very problematic and did some destructive things that didn't even help these girls in any way possible. And in spite of that, I will say that many of the people that were on her show did wind up being A-list celebrities, working actors, and many of them went on to have very successful A-list celebrity careers. Except for one of the most well-known people to be on her show, Tiffany Richardson. It's really funny how she's one of the most famous contestants on American Next Top Model and she's known for being screamed at and yelled at, but not many of us really know much about her, what she's been up to, who she really is, other than when Tyra embarrassed her on national television at only 21 years old. I was rooting for you, we were all rooting for you, how dare you learn something from this? The infamous outburst spawned the creation of so many rampant memes and has even sparked numerous parodies, social media memes, and still to this day is one of the most used gifts on Twitter. Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. The infamous "We were all rooting for you" scene was even infamously mocked by Family Guy. You you don't know what it's like to grow up the way I grew up. You know what? How dare you? You don't know me. You have no idea where I come from. Where I. Tiffany Richardson was born and raised in Miami, Florida in 1984. Tiffany was raised by her grandmother because her parents weren't very active in her life, unfortunately. And due to that, Tiffany had a lot of repressed anger, sadness, and was pretty much angry and upset at the world, which then spiraled into anger issues. And typically people with anger issues have a lot of repressed and balled up anger because of their upbringing. On top of that, Tiffany inevitably became a statistic because she ended up getting pregnant right out of high school when she was a teen mom. So due to that, she had a mouth to feed and she also had a baby daddy that walked out on her. At only 20 years old, Tiffany started stripping at a Miami strip club to support herself and her entire family and to take care of her son because she pretty much was doing it all alone. She was a single mom, dealt with a lot of hardships in her life, and she had to do everything she could to take care of herself. I had a lot of fights and stuff when I was a teenager and everything, but my grandmother and everybody always tried to keep me out of trouble. But the more they tried to teach me to do good, the worst I turned out. <laughs> but lately, after I had my baby, um, I had to be a mother. I couldn't be running the streets and beating up on people anymore, so I had to change my life. And unfortunately, a lot of those things that she did led to her walking down the wrong path, being around a lot of negative people, and doing a lot of negative things. Tiffany's grandmother played a major role in motivating her to try out for America's Next Top Model, and her grandmother actually encouraged her to audition for the show. 
Tiffany once stated, top model was my way out with what I was doing before I killed myself or did some crazy shit or ended up in jail or dead. Tiffany has already disappointed most of her family and due to that, Tiffany decided to do the show because she wanted to make her grandmother proud and to make everyone in her family have a less reason to look down on her and feel like she was a failure. To be honest, I got out of control because my family was trying to lock me down because they saw I was going in the wrong direction. Why do you want to be a model? Everybody thinks that I'm just, and I am, but you know, I want to show people that just because I've done all kinds of things, you know, I can, I can be somebody. I'm not just living for myself. I have my family to think about. I've disappointed them my whole life. And when I told my grandmother that I was coming here, she was like, hallelujah, you know, my prayers have been answered. Tiffany auditioned for the show back in 2004, and the producers admired her story and thought her upbringing was great for ratings. And since this was during the real world era, a lot of casting directors were looking for people with traumatic stories and with broken and damaged self-esteem. Hence why when you guys watch a lot of these reality shows, a lot of these girls are usually damaged, come from a lot of traumatic backgrounds, and pretty much have no direction in life. After so many interviews and so many casting tapes, Tiffany finally made it to the final round of casting, and she finally made it on set to film for Cycle 3. However, Tiffany infamously got into a very bad bar fight when she was in LA at a West Hollywood bar. Bitch pour beer on my weed. So I'm thinking, don't fight, do it. You know, everything was, I had the evil twin and the, the good one. So as we all know, the evil one won. That stank hoe poured the beer on my weed. This is not even my hair. All right, baby, I know you're mad. I'm cool, cause I'm, I, don't, I don't got nothing right. to say, but I wanna be like. According to Tyra, Tiffany was sent home for season three because she felt like Tiffany had a lot of issues and she felt Tiffany was very deranged. However, they did say they would allow her back if she underwent anger management classes. As we all know, American Top Model was known for grabbing a whole bunch of girls and then cutting a whole bunch of them last minute, which is a taste of the modeling industry. So Tiffany and a lot of girls didn't even make it into the house due to the fact that they simply just didn't make the cut. A year later, once Tiffany turned 21 years old, Producers reached out to Tiffany again and asked if she'd be interested in making a comeback, and Tiffany agreed. Tiffany, this is Spitfire, you know, got into a bar fight. She actually made it also to season three's semifinals. We thought she was undeniable beauty. She looked like an Egyptian mask, you know, very symmetrical face. Um, but she was just way too hot mannered and, and crazy tempered, and I just didn't want somebody in the house that I felt like could cause physical harm to herself or to others. So, you know, she had to chill out. She came back for four and she was a whole different person. You know, she went through anger management and now she's ready. Tiffany. Yeah! Yeah! Tiffany, yes! <laughs> yes! 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 Tiffany was casted for Cycle 4 in the year 2005 and she quickly became a fan favorite for her bad attitude, her wittiness, and her hood persona. Tiffany also touched viewers with her story because she actually stated that she had a very rough upbringing. Tiffany made it very clear that she was trying to find herself and she was trying to find a reason to live because she had a kid and she came from humble beginnings. Tiffany had a habit of always letting her family down and Tiffany felt like her biggest flaw on the show was that she wasn't used to good things happening to her. I'm just not like that anymore. I'm just not. And I'm glad I'm not. <laughs> I went back home and I went to my anger management class. That helped a lot. Everything in my life is happy. I have a lot of help with my baby now. My boyfriend's wonderful. He's great. I'm happy. I'm a happy person. Go on cry, baby. Go on cry. Why are you tearing I'm up? strong because I was thinking of, I was laying in the, the, the bed and I'm like, I'm laying in Beverly Hills again. And I sleep at home with my baby in a twin size bed. I was just wishing my baby, my grandmother, I really wish she could see it because she ain't got no money. She, um, the last time I was here, they said that I needed two bathing suits. And she went and she brought me bathing suits. The day before I left, I was like, Grandma, well, you know why the lights went up for them? And she was like, cuz, bro, somebody ain't getting paid because you going. My grandmother let the lights go off, they buy me a bathing suit. I love her so much. I just want to show my son and my family as well that I can do better. And Tiffany even said on the show that she felt like her biggest flaw was constantly shutting things away because she wasn't used to good things happening to her. So due to that, Tiffany made it very clear that she would constantly self-sabotage 
and even let her family down constantly because of her bad decisions and her shit upbringing. So due to that, Tiffany would self-sabotage, reject opportunities, and she would even reject people due to her crap upbringing. Tiffany finally made it through half of the show and even had several successful shoots, but it wasn't until the seventh episode where things pretty much went downhill for Tiffany where she was eliminated. Tyra and the judges on the panel asked the finalists to read the teleprompter the best way they knew how. And despite all the fumbling, most of the girls at least made a consistent effort to read the teleprompter. And Tiffany sadly didn't even try. Hi, I'm Tiffany. It's Fashion Week in Paris. And um, Technicolor is the name of the game. Can you? I can't do this. Yes, you can. Keep going. I can't. Why? Breathe just, and go through it. Just try to go through it. Tiffany, the other girls did not know these words. They goofed the words. Go through it. Just have fun with it. Use your personality. Be you. Um, you want to go home? If you don't do this, you're going to go home. because it was apparently too hard. Once it came time for the elimination process, Tiffany and her castmate Rebecca were both grilled and eliminated during a shocking double elimination, something that's never even happened on the show before. Tiffany seemed to take the news very lightly and that for some reason irritated Tyra. Can you guys stand in front of me? I just wanna say one more thing to you. Yeah. Rebecca, I admire your emotion right now. It shows to me that this was something that's very important to you. Tiffany, I'm extremely disappointed in you. This is a joke to you. You've been through anger management. You've been through your grandmother getting her lights turned off to buy you a swimsuit for this competition. And you go over there and you joke and you laugh. This is serious to this. It was almost as if Tiffany already mentally prepared herself to pretty much get sent home and to be let down. It was almost as if Tiffany was already ready for this because she manifested it. And it was sad because Tiffany went through so much just to get casted, just to have a very mellow attitude when it was time for her to be eliminated. Sometimes when people are used to being abandoned and missing out on things, they tend to already manifest their own demise. And it turned into a very heated dispute that we all know and remember to this day. You go over there and you joke and you laugh. This is serious to these girls. And this should be serious to you. Looks can be deceiving. I'm hurt. I am. But I can't change it, Tyra. I, I've been- Yes, you can. No, you can't change I'm, what? I'm sick of crying about stuff that I cannot change. I'm sick of being disappointed. I'm sick of all of it. I'm not. You're thank not sick you. of being disappointed, yeah, Tiffany. Obviously, I am. No, you're not. If you were sick of being disappointed, you would stand up and you would take control of your destiny. Do you know that you had a possibility to win? Do you know that all of America is rooting for you? Do you know that? And then you come in here and you treat this like a joke? You come in here and look at that and say, I can't read that. You read 10 times better than half of those girls over there. You did. You did. And you come in here with a defeatist attitude. I don't have a bad attitude. Maybe I am angry inside. I've been through stuff, so I'm angry. Yes, but it's not, this is not, be okay, quiet, but Tiffany. Everybody, be quiet! Look, that's what is I'm wrong with you. Ask, but you're not, Stop I'm, it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. Take responsibility for you. You roll in your eyes and you act like this because you've heard it all before. You've heard it all before. You don't know where the hell I come from. You have no idea what I've been through. But I'm not a victim. I grow from it and I learn. Take responsibility for yourself. I've never seen Tyra that way ever. I can't even imagine her being that way. Tyra. She was right. The only thing that's keeping me here was my grandma and my child. And I tried to hang in there for my grandma. My grandma just wants the best for me. According to Tiffany, there was more than what meets the eye. And there was so much more in that debacle that a lot of viewers at home didn't get to see back in 2005. Tiffany alleges in a 2017 interview with BuzzFeed that Tyra was already having a very bad day. She felt that Tyra was trying to make an example out of her and use her struggles for ratings. Looking back, Tiffany said in an interview, it was just like bullshit. It was so over the top for no reason. Tyra must have really needed them ratings to go up or something. Years down the line, Tiffany infamously stated, it was beautiful for TV. They love to see black girls struggling and somebody coming to save her. It did leave a very bad taste in a lot of viewers' mouth because it came across as very extra, to say the least. But a lot of people thought it was pretty much whatever because Tiffany seemed very nonchalant in her exit interviews. Home with me, Tyra. 
really did care about me, her yelling at me. I have the utmost respect for her. Because she could have easily said, okay, whatever, and, you know, bye. That showed me that she saw deeply into me, and she cared about me. And that's cool knowing that, you know, Tyra cares about you. Tiffany claims that in the unedited version of the clip, Tyra said a lot of things that Tiffany can't really remember because it was so long ago. But Tiffany claims in her 2017 interview with BuzzFeed that went viral, that Tyra said that Tiffany can go back home and go sleep on her mattress on the floor with her baby. And Tiffany also claimed that when she did clap back at Tyra, she also said, fuck top model and fuck this opportunity. But of course, that wasn't shown on television. Once Tiffany was kicked off the show, Tiffany was placed in a hotel before her flight back home for a few days because most cast members when they're eliminated off the show are wine and dine and thrown into a hotel before their flight in the next following days because in most cases for a reality show, most people have to do their quote unquote exit interviews. Literally almost a day later, Tiffany claims that Tyra, a producer, and Tyra's mom wanted to have a meeting with her for some odd reason. Hell no, I ain't received no apology. She pulled me with her and her mom, that she came to the hotel and she get me with that whole mentor thing. Tyra could have told me anything. I'm like, yes, like I'm a messed up and you're going to let me come back. And I'm thinking it's going to be a whole nother, you know, um, energy. Right after the argument, she came to the hotel. Her and her mom, she was talking mama on me because her mama was so sweet. And um, they was like, Tyra, want to have a meeting with you. So we went to um, uh, a room and I had a meeting with her and her mom. And she was just telling me, she was like, Tiffany, I just believed in you. You know, I believed in you so much. And I wanted you to win. You know, you remind me of me. You're a blank palette. And, you're, you know, your face, blah, blah, blah. Woo, woo, woo. So um, I'm like, oh, you know, I did an interview right behind it. So she done sauced me up. And I'm feeling all some type of way. I'm like, I love Tyra. And Tyra loves me. We'll take it from there. Part of me did give up. I was being very disrespectful. But I'm taking a lot home with me. Tyra really did care about me. Her yelling at me. Tyra really did care about me, her yelling at me. I have the utmost respect for her. And, you know, she's going to be my mentor. Woo -woo -woo -woo. She called me a couple times once we went home. And, um, you know, she just was prepping me. Because after the show came on, it was like, I'm all at you. And it is what it is. I don't, you know, she don't owe me anything. But it was just like, oh, okay, you finessed the kid. <laughs> like She claimed that Tyra sweet talked her. And she told her how talented she was. And how she was even going to be her mentor and help her elevate to the next level. Because she saw herself in Tiffany. But looking back, Tiffany claimed that she felt like she was only buttered up in sweet talk. Because she felt like Tyra wanted her to do the closing interviews. But she wanted Tiffany to do the closing interviews in a way that made her feel better. Once Tiffany went back home, Tiffany went on to live her regular life. But months after the show began to air, Tiffany claimed that Tyra gave her a call warning her that the heated episode was going to air and to brace herself. Once the episode aired, Tiffany was very disappointed in the way things looked. Because of course, the clip was heavily edited. Tyra still looked horrible. But the clip was edited in a way to where it didn't show the entire dispute. And Tiffany did feel some type of way about that. Um, Before the show started, before the whole six, I think it was a six or seven episode came out. Tyra used to literally call my mom, not my mom, my grandmother's house. Because I was at my grandmother's house. She used to call and, you know, try to act like she's checking up on me. Oh, hey, girl, you know, I'm just calling to check up on you. You know, the, the episode's going to be coming out. I just want you to be prepared. And we'll do it the whoop. And I'm like, okay, you know, the first couple times I talked to her, but then it started getting like, I was over it. Long story short, she felt like Tyra's checkups were very superficial and it always rubbed it the wrong way. But she never said anything because Tyra promised her all those things literally days after the debacle. Because Tyra promised to be her mentor and because Tyra promised to be there for her and check in on her, she kind of felt like she kind of owed Tyra by picking up the phone and tolerating Tyra's superficial checkups. And to be honest, I'm not even surprised at this point because we need to keep in mind that Tyra isn't really known for being a genuine person. According to many people, this isn't even my words, many people know Tyra is not a genuine person. Tiffany claims that she never said anything and felt like she had to stay silent because she felt like she kind of owed Tyra in a sense. Tiffany was asked nearly a year later to appear on Tyra's show. And of course, Tyra even offered to send Tiffany money so that way she can get babysitter money, take care of her family. So of course, Tiffany of course flew out. So it's very evidently clear that because Tyra was buttering Tiffany up, maybe she wanted Tiffany to come on her show in the first place. Now, I couldn't find many clips of Tiffany on the Tyra show, but she appeared on the Tyra show twice 
and the second time was when things kind of went downhill. But the first time, it all started with a random update. It was all about cameras falling around Tiffany, giving an update on her life, what she's been up to, and what life is like ever since leaving the show. I realized like a lot of things that Tara said about me was true. I guess I'm just not used to good things happening to me because I was always, you know, making life rougher than it had to be. Tyra, we keep in touch now, and she's helping me a lot right now. Not just with modeling, but just emotionally. So, I love Tyra. <laughs> wow, I'm finally a glamour girl. <laughs> I've done International Hair Magazine. I'm really, like, starting to get confident in myself and know that, you know, I can be a model. <laughs> now I'm back home. And I'm getting hit with toys and gotta get juice in the middle of the night. Being on the show doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> and Tiffany was featured in season one, episode eight, during a special called Update on America's Next Top Model. And that premiered during the fall of 2005 on Tyra's show. Tiffany then returned to the show a whole year later. And sadly, it would be the last time Tiffany would appear on Tyra's show. And it would be the last time Tyra and Tiffany ever had a relationship. Tiffany's life was showcased in a very negative light on the show when she appeared for a second time. Tiffany claims that when she sat on the couch and she was being interviewed on Tyra for her second and official appearance on the Tyra show, she claimed that Tyra pretty much grilled her and asked her a lot of very enticing questions. And she claimed that Tyra was pretty much using her life and her story as a way to exploit it for good ratings. So Tiffany pretty much felt like her entire story, her upbringing, her impoverished background, her bad life, her fighting, her anger issues were all being exploited just to make good television for Tyra. However, Tiffany's grandmother was not very fond of what Tyra was doing. She felt like she saw a right through Tyra's antics and she got annoyed and she couldn't take it anymore. Tiffany was invited to do a tell-all interview to talk about her life as a stripper, her life doing drugs, and her life growing up in the impoverished streets of Miami, Florida. But of course, that rubbed Tiffany the wrong way, but she did it anyways because Tyra paid her $1,000 to show up on the show. Tyra paid her $1,000 in accommodations because Tiffany needed babysitter money and Tiffany was struggling in general financially. But of course, the entire show was incredibly negative and it was painting Tiffany in a very negative light. And Tiffany's mom had enough once that episode aired. Once that episode aired, Tiffany's mom wasn't very happy. She felt like Tiffany's life story was being used, manipulated, and exploited just for viewership. So due to that, Tiffany's grandmother wrote a very long, nasty, and gruesome letter via email letting Tyra know that she was tired of her ass, letting it be known that she's tired of Tyra exploiting her family business, not only on American Next Top Model, but also exploiting her family's business on her talk show for a second time. Uh, well, actually my grandmother, I had to stop my grandmother from cussing her out numerous times. Um, and um, after I went on her show a couple times, um, I asked my grandmother not to cuss her out, but my grandmother sent her this strong letter and I never got called back on Tyra's show again. Like, you done, you done messed up the bag. I was, because I used to be like, oh no Tyra, I need uh, babysitter money. They was for me to go on her show. I need this money, even though it still wasn't that much, girl. I think we got like a thousand or something like that, but. But of course, that was the beginning of the end of their relationship because once Tiffany's grandmother sent that email letting Tyra know about herself, Tyra never replied to the email, of course. And of course, she never heard from Tyra ever again. Tiffany was initially disappointed that Tyra stopped reaching out to her, but she also didn't really care that much because she knew Tyra was being superficial in the first place. It was almost as if Tyra was doing all those nice things and those fake little checkups because she wanted to make herself feel better. She wanted to make sure Tiffany probably didn't sell her story and she wanted to make sure Tiffany wasn't going on talking to the media and she wanted to make sure that since that was a very viral and popular moment like it is now and even back then, she probably wanted to make sure she maintained that bridge with Tiffany because she probably wanted to make sure she could exploit Tiffany's life for as long as possible. Truth be told, when some people are acting, sometimes they forget their lines. And Tiffany and Tyra pretty much had their falling out in 2007. But of course, literally a decade later, Tiffany would later do a tell-all and infamous interview with BuzzFeed a decade later. And in that interview with BuzzFeed, she talked about her life, what she was up to, how old her kids are, and she talked about what she was up to when she was planning on doing with her life, and she also talked about her fallout with Tyra. She pretty much never really cared to be a model in the first place, and she was only doing it for something to do. On top of that, Tiffany made it very clear that she's not very fond of a lot of the popularity that she has. She doesn't find a lot of the memes that she's in funny. She doesn't find it entertaining at all. And she doesn't find it amusing at all, mainly because she just doesn't like the fact that she's known for being one of the most famous people to ever be on that show. 
over the fact that she was screamed at. Looking back, to this day, Tiffany feels like Tyra was still doing too much. She looks back at it and she says, why are you yelling at me? Because I'm grown as fuck. It was just like bullshit. It was so over the top for no reason. She clearly needed them ratings to go up or something. Looking back, she even stated, I still didn't take advantage of the situation like I should have. But you know, you live and you learn. She said, I can't regret that because it made me who I am right now. And I needed all of that. And Tiffany is well aware that it really was just a TV show. Because Tiffany stated with BuzzFeed, we get picked apart for like 15, 20 minutes each. If you say something back, you're going to be up there for a minute. And sometimes they be going at it, like roasting the fuck out of us back to back. And looking back, Tiffany feels like the show did absolutely nothing for her career. Because Tiffany considers herself, and I quote, famous broke. Because she says, and I quote, every fucking day somebody's coming up to me about this show and how I could have won and Tyra said this. And it's like, really? It's been 10 years. Can y'all not? In spite of that happening so many years ago, Tiffany is 39 years old and she's pretty much over it. She feels like she's a complete different person, but she has to let all that off her chest. Even though that interview was in 2017, Tyra did briefly address Tiffany two years later during the pandemic when Tyra Banks was on The Breakfast Club. And a lot of people don't know this. Woman that you screamed on and told her we was all rooting for you. <laughs> I actually don't remember, but Tiffany, oh my God, that girl is my heart. Tiffany, oh my God, that girl is my heart. Ugh. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. That that uh, that emotional thing that I had was like me being so invested in her. I actually thought she was going to win. Um, one of the things that I used to see in the fashion industry is that the fashion industry would take girls from the trailer park and dust her off and make her a supermodel, but they wouldn't do that from the hood. Mm. Like you didn't see the girl with the door knocker earrings, you know, with the fronts and like, you know, like some streaks of purple and green in her hair and, you know, talks like how I talk when I'm in Inglewood. You didn't see her getting discovered and then right. they like redo her and make her a star. And that was part of my thing. One of the many things of that I was really passionate about for Top Model. So when I saw my urban girls from the hood and I saw her giving up, it just it took me somewhere. But after that situation and I edited a lot of stuff out to protect her personal life and stuff Wait, and I edited a lot of stuff out to protect her personal life and stuff but um but after that I realized let me just back up a little you know like you can lead the horse to water but you can't make them drink and maybe it just wasn't for her you know and so I had to respect that and I've seen interviews where she's talked about that crazy moment mm -hmm. and I really respect um how she talks about it to this day i think she's really healthy about it and honest like tyra was freaking crazy i don't know what the hell she was doing but yeah i did give up and maybe i shouldn't have done that but she overreacted but i you know gave up too soon so i think it was a very fair um, assessment usually a lot of times people who do you dirty or do weird shit to you will give you guilt gifts as a means of manipulation so it makes sense why tyra was offering her mentorship just for her staying quiet, just for her not really blasting what actually happened, and just for her still being in contact with her so that way she can explore her story years down the line. Fast forward to now, two months ago, Tiffany then spoke out and went onto the Oliver Twix show on YouTube to discuss her life and what she's been up to ever since appearing on America Next Top Model. And long story short, Tiffany had a lot of very not so nice things to say about Tyra. But again, a big shout out to Oliver Twix. A big reason why this video was possible is because of him. So please be sure to show his video some love. I'll leave a link in the description box down below to his channel and a link to the actual interview. Oh, did you ever receive an apology from her? Hell no, I ain't received no apology. I told you. She pulled me with her and her mom that she came to the hotel and she get me with that whole mentor thing. Tyra could have told me anything. I'm like, yes, like I'm a mess. But um, she did tell me you can go home and sleep on your mattress with your baby, your newborn baby. And um, she said a lot of deep, deeper stuff. You know, when you arguing, you arguing. She's like, oh, you don't know where I'm from. And woo de woo de woo. And I'm like, bitch, I do know where you're from. And fuck top mom and fuck everybody who work in. F all y'all. Wait, you said that, Tiffany? Right. Or that I, that I said, don't cry. What made her so upset that she wanted to go off that it just bubbled up in her so much like I'm just so heated and I was just so rooting for you bitch win never and it is what it is Tiffany oh my god that girl is my heart on top of that Tyra still made money off that whole debacle even years later not just off of streams and ratings but Tyra even came out with a emoji platform which if y'all didn't know celebrities did this dumbass thing where they thought it was a good idea to come out with their own emojis and stickers and of course that flopped really quickly and that's no longer a trend.
But Tyler decided to hop on the trend and make her own emojis and stickers that people can use during text messages. And to make a long story short, one of the emojis that Tyler put on her Ty Ty emoji platform was, we were all rooting for you. Guess what launched today? Bam! In the Apple Store, Ty Ty Emoji by Tyra Banks. These are stickers that are so fun. Look at this. I mean, we got, I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you stickers. I got like stickers that are like spilling tea, honey. Did you see her whack pose last night? Oh yes, honey, spill the tea. And then look at that. She actually, we, we, oh, oh my God. I'm so I can understand why Tiffany has not so nice things to say about Tyra. She currently has a daughter that's about 14 years old and she currently has a son that's roughly around 19 years old. She lives a very private life. No one really knows much about her, who she's dating, what she's up to, what she really looks like because her social media is pretty much private. And as of now, she's currently a businesswoman. As of now, Tiffany owns an adult daycare where she takes care of special needs adults who pretty much have disabilities and need extra care. Well, I own a adult daycare for special needs adults too. So yeah, it's, that's my life now. We take them like on field trips, play studio for them. It's, it's, it's a lot. But I love what I do. In a nutshell, I kind of came to the realization that Tyra Banks still ain't shit. And truth be told, Tyra Banks is going to hell in a handbasket. Tyra has taken accountability, however, for a lot of her bad behavior. And she does admit now, now, that if she had the opportunity to not air a lot of the things that she showed, she probably wouldn't have aired it. On top of that, she does have a lot of regrets for a lot of things that were shown on TV and the way she's portrayed because Tyra, looking back, does understand that it doesn't look very good now that she watches it back. So yeah. <laughs> 10 years later, right. you know, during COVID-19, people are quarantined and they're watching Top Model and they're seeing all these mistakes and things that we made. Um, and so... I think it is my job to not be mad at a younger generation that didn't see it. It is my job to apologize again because they didn't see it, right? They didn't see me do that. And so I have to continue to apologize. 10 years from now, there's gonna be a whole nother generation <laughs> and there'll be some other reason. They'll be snowed in one day and watching Top Model. What the hell did she do? This 50 something year old woman, da, da, da. but it's my job to say, yes, I've apologized for it. And we're gonna apologize again and keep apologizing because it was wrong. Shut up. But that was pretty much that for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed this nice breakdown. Please be sure to let me know what you guys want to break down on next. Many of you guys have been asking me to do a breakdown on so many different people, child stars, entertainers, and much more. But please be sure to comment them down below and tell me who you want a breakdown on. But that's that for this video. I'm going to enjoy my fish heads. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, that's that. Choice out this bitch. She'll be crying, but I just can't let you go. Thinking and thinking and thinking. Of, oh, she'll be crying, and I just can't let you go, baby. All the things that you said that I never said. All the things that you did that I never did. Oh, 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 oh baby. From the fire. Somebody go tell Beyonce that she got competition. <laughs>